be thou exalted, Lord. Be thou glorified. Be thou lifted up. We give you praise and glory. We give you honor and thanksgiving. We say hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name. Hosanna in the highest. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We glorify you. Be thou exalted, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we have worshiped. Lord, we celebrate you. We give you all the praise and glory, Jesus. We reverence you. We thank you for another time in your presence, another time to sit at your feet and to learn of you and to make petitions and, and, to, and to make prayers unto you. Lord Jesus, we thank you because we know you are here with us in the name of Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence. We ask, Lord, that you grant us understanding, teach us to pray, empower us to pray. Pray through us and pray with us. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name forever. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God forevermore. We want to appreciate God for another time in his presence, another time to sit at the feet of Jesus and to make intercession, to make prayers. Amen to Jesus. Amen. This is the eighth day of this um, prayer meeting commanding the year 2021. Amen to Jesus. Amen. And I want to appreciate God for how he has been teaching us, how he has been enlightening our spirit man, how we have been getting revelation and insight into God's word, and how we have been praying in line with scriptures in line with the will of the father amen to jesus um i want to believe that every one of us who has been participating in this meeting we have been praying the prayers in our own personal prayer times amen to jesus and um, we thank god for seven days of his grace that and revelation we have received and i want to assure you by the privilege of god's grace that today we are going to learn some more things by the help of the holy spirit and then we are going to pray in line with the will of the father amen to jesus amen. praise god forevermore uh, today I'm going to be sharing on from a verse of scripture, um, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. Amen. And it says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Holy Spirit grant us the understanding into the scripture in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Now the above verse makes us understand that without faith, Christ cannot dwell in our hearts praise god it says that christ may dwell in your heart by faith that means christ dwells in our hearts by faith so without faith christ cannot dwell in our hearts praise god forevermore and the reason for this is that we were saved through faith we were saved through faith that's the reason why christ can only dwell in our hearts by faith because we were saved through faith ephesians chapter 2 verse 5 c and um 8 says for by grace are ye saved through faith. But for by grace are ye saved through faith. Praise God forevermore. Now, we were saved by, by grace. This implies that the person of grace saved us by bringing salvation to us. Amen to Jesus. Now, we're saved by grace. And being saved by grace means that the person of grace saved us by bringing salvation to us. And this person is the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace is not a teaching. Grace is not a subject. Grace is not a doctrine. Grace is a person. Amen to Jesus. When we hear people say, these grace teachers, this doctrine of grace, this teaching of grace, just like here people say the doctrine of prosperity, the teaching of prosperity. Now, grace is not, grace is not a teaching. Grace is not a doctrine. Grace is a person and is the person of Jesus Christ. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. And who is the, who, what, what is the grace of God that bringeth salvation that appeared to all men? John 3 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, as the person of Jesus, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the world, and the world was God, and the world was God. Verse 11 says, And the world was made flesh and dwelt among men, and we beheld his glory as, a, as, a, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Praise God forevermore. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So the grace of God is a, is a, is, is a, is the one who conveyed salvation to humanity. And one, the only one person did that, and that's the person of Jesus Christ. So the grace of God is not the teaching, it's not the doctrine, it's the person of Jesus Christ. Praise God forevermore. Mm -hmm. Amen to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So now we must understand that we've been saved by grace, by the person called, called Jesus, the person called grace, and not the person of Jesus. But the medium through which grace saves us is what? Is faith. So we are saved by grace. Grace brought salvation to us. But the medium through which grace saves us is what? 
is faith. Now, I'll use a clear illustration to, to, uh, to portray this truth and is an analogy of a particular, um, I just want you to envision it in your mind. Amen to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, just envision in your mind a man in a well crying and shouting for help, 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 crying for help, shouting for help. And then a passerby hears him. Amen to Jesus. Mm -hmm. the, the well is deep. The passerby intends to help him. The only way the passerby can help him is to do what? Mm -hmm. Is to get a rope and throw the rope into the well. And then the man holds on to the rope and then he can pull the man out of the rope. Amen to Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Now, the man who saves the one in the well is what? Is likened to grace. Praise God. He is the savior of that man in the well. He's likened to grace. In other words, he's likened to Jesus. Praise God forevermore. So Jesus is the one who saves us. Amen. But remember something, that the man who, the, the Savior, could not save the man in the world without the help of what? Of a rope. Amen. So the rope used by the Savior to save the man in the world is likened to what? To faith. This is a simple analogy to help us understand. Are, are we together? Are we together? Now, so that's the instrument used to save. So Jesus is the Savior. He is the grace of God. But the instrument he used to save us is what? Is faith. Amen to Jesus. So without the rope, no matter how much the Savior desires to save the other man, he will be unable to do that. Praise God forevermore. Mm -hmm. And this is the fix that a lot of us put ourselves into. Amen. Now also, if the Savior lets down the rope and the one in need of help refuses to hold on to the rope, what happens? The Savior cannot save him. So we can see that the rope is very important here. Now, there's one part of it. The Savior cannot save the one in need of help without the rope. Now, the second part of it is, if the one in need of help, the Savior lets down the rope, and the one in need of help does not hold on to the rope, the Savior at the end of the day cannot also what? save him. This makes us understand that without faith, without faith, we cannot be saved. Are we together? Without faith, we cannot be saved. Without faith, we cannot be saved. Now, this both explain the importance and the indispensable nature of faith in the pack package of what? Of salvation. Without faith, we cannot be saved. Now, a lot of people want to be saved, but they want to be saved without faith. It doesn't work. Amen to Jesus. Now, John 3, 16 explains um, this to us. He says, um, for God so loved the world, King James Version says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible in basic English makes it, makes, makes it says, renders it this way. It says, for God had such love for the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever has faith in him, whoever has what? Faith in him, may not come to destruction, but have eternal life. Praise God forevermore. Mm -hmm. Now, so let's understand this. Let's understand this briefly. Let's understand this briefly. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, this is God's desire to save the world. And we see this in him sending his son, Jesus. Amen to Jesus. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's God's desire to save the world. Now, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, whosoever believeth in him, and the Bible in basic English says, whosoever has faith in him, amen to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And this is man's desire to get saved. So what comes between God's desire to save the world and man's desire to get saved is what? Faith. Faith is the middle point between God's desire to save the world and man's desire to get faith. So when you remove faith from the equation, God's desire can never meet man's desire. Are you getting what I'm saying? So most of the time you see, you see a lot of people want to be saved, but they don't want to act in faith. They don't want to act in faith. There is no way you can get saved without acting in faith. Praise the Lord forevermore. The Bible says, with the heart man believeth unto salvation, and with the, with the mouth confession is made, on, uh, with the heart, ma with the heart man, man believeth, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you don't just end at having the faith of belief. You have to have the faith of confession. So without you having your part to play in faith, salvation cannot come into the picture. Amen to Jesus. Amen. And but we have a lot of people today who just want a... A, a movie, a, a, a magic wand waved on them, and then salvation comes into their life, 
Salvation entails is a Greek word, soteria, or the word sozo, which means deliverance, which means um, 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 health, which means prosperity. Amen. So salvation is a whole package. It's a holistic package. A lot of people just want a magic wand to, uh, to be waved on them. And then they, they have health, they have provisions, they have everything, they have Jesus, and everything just happens like that. It doesn't work like that. Amen to Jesus. Amen. You must have faith for you to get saved. Amen to Jesus. Amen. You must have faith for you to get saved. You cannot be saved without faith. That is the instrument, that is the middle point that joins God's desire to save man and man's desire to be saved. Amen. Amen. When this middle, when this connector is removed, then there is no salvation. A lot of the times, Christians want to be saved, but they don't want to employ the connector. The connector between God's desire to save us and your desire to be saved is faith. That's the reason why if you're not going to live by faith, the Bible says that just shall live by faith. If you're not going to live by faith, you cannot enjoy God's salvation in every application of your life. A lot of the time, Christians want to enjoy salvation, but they don't want to live by faith. They want to live by fear. They want to live by that. They want to live by their senses. They want to live by everything that nature gives to them, but they don't want to take a step of faith, not a step of faith. They don't want anything to be done by faith. As a result of that, God desires to save them, and then they desire to be saved, but because they have removed the connector of faith, they cannot get the salvation. Are we together? Mm. Amen. Amen. And it's a serious situation in the body of Christ today. You see people wanting the man of God to fast for them, the man of God to pray for them, the man of God to read the Bible for them, the man of God to act in faith for them. If people go as far as paying men of God to pray for them, I'm not against you sowing seeds and giving offerings. They are good. Those are good things. Amen to Jesus. Mm. But they should not take the place of your faith. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your faith must still be intact for even your offerings and your tithes, your givings to command results. Amen. Mm -hmm. Anything that is not done in faith is sin. That's what the word of God says. So if you give without faith, if you sow seeds without faith, if you, if, if you make sacrifices without faith, expecting the man of God's faith to work for you, you're actually acting in sin. And as a result of that, you have removed the connector between your God's uh, desire to save you and your desire to be saved. And at the end of the day, you discover that you will not get the desired salvation. That's the reason why I see people say, but I, I gave, I, I gave offerings, I, I paid tithes, I did this, I did that, I, I did everything. And yet, I didn't get my desired salvation. The reason why I didn't get this is because we removed the connector between God and you, and that is faith. Once you remove the connector between God and you, your salvation is not sure. Praise God forevermore. And when I'm talking about salvation, I'm talking about salvation soteria, which means the Greek word soteria, the Greek word sozo, which means deliverance, which means prosperity, which means salvation from the damnation, everything holistically. So you may be saved from hell, but you are not saved in your health. Are you getting what I'm saying? You may be saved from hell, but you are not saved in your mind. You may be saved from hell, from hell, but you are not saved in your finances. You may be saved from hell, but you are not saved in your family. Now, salvation is soteria, it's holistic, it's everything. It's all encompassing. Praise God forevermore. It is prosperity availed to you, both spirit, soul, and body. So it's, 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 it's against the desire of God for you to be saved in one aspect of your life and not saved in the other aspect of your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? God gave you a holistic salvation and he wants you to experience it in every ramification. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. And that by faith is very important. Very, very important. It's the connector between God's desire to save man and man's desire to be saved. Praise God forevermore. Now let's see how does faith come. Romans 10 verse 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now I want to bring something here that would help us a great deal. Now the King James Version renders God there as God. He renders it God. That's the, and if you check the Greek word in the King James, it's the word feel. Amen. That's the word feel. If you use a strong concordance and check it through the King James, you see God there in the King James and then you see feel. Amen to Jesus. But the original text, it is not God. It is Christ, which is the word crystal. So if you go to your your, your coin Greek, your coin Greek text, you discover that it is not faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of God. It's faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of Christo. That's the word of what? Of Christ. Amen to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And other versions like the B Bible in basic English, International Standard Version, the Amplified Version, they render it as Christ, not as God. Amen to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Why some others render it as the Messiah? Amen to Jesus, which is Christ. Praise God forevermore. Mm -hmm. So then we can put it this way. The right rendering is, so faith comes by hearing and hearing the words of Christ. The word of Christ. That is the Bible in basic English. ISB says, consequently, faith results from listening 
and listening results through the word of the Messiah. You see that? Amen. Now, so this means that faith only comes to us when we hear the words of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ centered words. Are you getting what I'm saying? So if you are hearing any other word other than the words of Jesus, other than the words centered on Jesus, I want to show you something. Faith will not be generated in your spirit, man. Are you getting me? This means that Jesus only dwells in us when we hear him. So when we don't hear him, he doesn't dwell in us. Are we together? So the more of Jesus we hear, the more of Jesus-centered words we hear. Now let me let you know something. These are de dedicated times. These are dangerous times. They are, the Bible says there are many voices. Are you getting what I'm saying? And these are times when we'll be hearing many voices. Oh, the crisis in this nation. The crisis in that nation. The newspaper gives you voices. Different news channels give you voices. You hear voices here and there. And even when you pick up your Bible, if you are not careful, you will hear your own voice instead of hear the voice of hear the voice of Christ. Praise God. For forevermore hallelujah to jesus but we in this day in these dangerous times we must be very very careful to ensure that we hear only the words of christ we must only hear jesus centered words because if only when you hear jesus centered words that jesus resides in you the more you hear jesus centered words the more jesus resides in you the more jesus gains dominance in you the more jesus gains dominance in your mind the more jesus gains dominance in your body the more jesus gains dominance in your environment the more jesus gains dominance in your family in your job in your career are you get what i'm saying now if you the more you listen to jesus centered words and the, the more you listen to the words of jesus the more you become more conscious of jesus and less conscious of your environment the more you become more conscious of Jesus and less conscious of the news around you, the happenings around you, and the chaos around you. Let me let you understand something. That bad news will never cease. Wrong voices will never shut up. As long as the earth remains, bad news remains. Wrong voices will keep speaking. Lies will keep going on. Propaganda will keep selling. If this is the truth, and which is the truth, it means that you have to prepare yourself to stop listening to what the devil has to say and to start listening to what Jesus has to say. And you get what I'm saying? So, faith only generates in us, Christ only resides in us to the extent to which we fill ourselves with his words. How much of the words of Christ are dwelling in your spirit, man? How much of the words of Christ are dwelling in your mind? How much of the words of Christ are dwelling in your body? How much of the words of Christ are dwelling in your family, in your, in your business, in your career, in your job? Now, you can so surround yourself with the words of Christ that the devil cannot have access. And the more of God's, the, words, the, the more of the words of Christ you listen to, the more it gains dominance in every aspect of your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even your devices. Yeah. You can so fill your atmosphere with the words of Christ that your devices will respond to the words of Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your, your house, your atmosphere, everything around you respond to the words of Christ. The extent to which we fill ourselves with the words of Christ is the extent to which Christ dwells in us. So half full of the word of Christ is half dwelling of Christ in us. And you get what I'm saying? And we have a lot of Christians who have our lives put in it as a ratio of 100%. We have 25% the words of Christ, 25% the words of social media, 25% the words of our, our parents and, 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 and family and loved ones and siblings, and 25% the words of the devil. Amen. And so at the end of the day, we are only 25% full of Christ, and that is failure as it were. And Christ will not be able to dwell. Jesus is either Lord of all or not Lord at all. So when you give him 25% of your life, you have been directly told him you are not dwelling here. You don't have a place here. And so long as you do that, the other things you are giving is 75%. We know distant and choke the, word of, the words of Christ in your life. Amen. And then they gain dominance. You see that maybe the words of your parents choke the 25% of the words of Christ in your life. Maybe the words of social media or the words of labor. One of them would choke the words of Christ in your life. And then at the end of the day, it gains dominance over the words of Christ. I we together. And so for us to live this year in, in success, we must be ready, very, very, very ready, very ready to get ourselves filled with the words of Christ. Soak yourself in the words of Christ. 
eat the words of Christ. The Bible says, I find the words and I did eat them and they were to me a joy and rejoicing of my soul. Hey, praise God. We have to eat the words of Christ. Drink it. Soak yourself in the words of Christ. Every access to the words of Christ, soak yourself in them so that you can have Christ dwelling in you. By the time the shakings of life come, the words of Christ are so indwelt in you. It's, the stamina is so much that even the shakings, they start shaking when they see you. And you understand what I'm saying? That's the way to live successfully in this year. That's the way to attain victory this year. For the only way to do that is what? To allow Christ to dwell in you. And to allow Christ to dwell in you, you have to what? Soak yourself. You have to eat the words of Christ. Keep, keep munching on it. Keep feeding on it. Keep feeding on it. Saturate your whole being with it. Amen to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when you do this, you see that the year just goes smoothly for you. Praise God forevermore. Now, in this night, we're going to pray one prayer. You see, we've always been praying the one line prayer in this prayer meeting. If you've been following us in this prayer meeting, you discover that we only pray one prayer in every meeting. We share God's word that we pray one prayer. Because one thing is needful. Amen to Jesus. When Jesus was in the Passion in Gethsemane, where he actually died, he prayed one line of prayer for three hours. Amen to Jesus. And we're going to be praying this prayer today. We're going to be saying, Lord Jesus, help me to hear you. And only you this year. Lord Jesus, help me to hear you and only you this year. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord Jesus this moment. Hey, Bonsi Branda Ladi Galaba Shatara Badi Adosa. Rekete Lebe de Besku Balanda Laba. Lord Jesus, help me to hear you and you alone this year. Only you this year. Help me not to hear the, the, the environment, not to hear the social media, not to hear the news network, not to hear the devil, not to hear family, loved ones, and anything, but to hear you and you alone this year. Irondi Kariya Balonzi Bala Sota Rataya Bakura Tazika. Somebody is talking to Jesus. This is not a year to listen to many voices. This is not a year to listen to many people. This is not a year to give audience to many voices. In the in the, in 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 in, in, in the in the multitude of voices comes confusion. But when your ears is given to only the words of Jesus, you will see yourself manifest Jesus here on earth. You will see yourself living in the fullness of Christ. You will see Christ fully indwelling you. Someone talk to God this moment. Lord Jesus, help me. Help me to hear you and you alone. Only your words this year. The year is starting off and there are so many voices already the year. There are voices from all over the nations of the earth. But you can choose to hear those voices or you can choose to hear Jesus alone. Talk to the Lord. Lord Jesus help me. Cause me to hear only you this year. Somebody is talking to the Lord Jesus. Hey, it cost me to hear you and you alone this for this year. Only your voice, only your words. Hey, only then can I get faith. Help me to put my connector in place. Come on, talk to the Lord. There are many words that will call your attention this year. There are many voices that will try to distract you this year. That's why we are praying this prayer. Lord Jesus, help me to hear only your words, to only listen to your voice. Rabada bala 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 bala
Somebody is talking to the Lord Jesus. Push his prayer. Somebody is talking to the Lord. Talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. He's hearing you. Talk to Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Lord Jesus, we ask of you. We ask that you help us to hear you and you alone. To listen to your words and your words alone. Amidst the many words and voices around, we ask that you empower us to hear your voice and your voice alone. Amen. To listen to your words and your words alone. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because we know you have heard us and answered us. Amen. Be glorified forever. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. I believe we're blessed by this time of prayer. Like I always encourage us, please, this prayer point should not end in the prayer meeting. Pray it on your own. Because these prayer points are important for the kind of life that we desire to live, the life of Christ, to manifest Christ here on earth. Amen to Jesus. I please, so I, that's why I encourage us to keep praying this prayer um, point on our own. And I believe that as you keep doing that, you will see transformations in your life. Your life will begin to move in a direction that you know that you don't have a hand in it, but the Lord is the one leading you. Amen to Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Tomorrow is another time, 5 p.m. GMT, that is Ghana time, and uh, 6 p.m. GMT plus 1 Nigeria time. Um, I want to encourage you to come again tomorrow. And don't just come alone. Come with a friend. Tell somebody about what you are doing. Tell somebody about what God is doing. Tell somebody about these prayers you are making before the Father and how your life is being transformed. Don't just keep it to yourself. Tell somebody, invite somebody for this prayer meeting, and I know that your life will never remain the same again. Praise God forevermore. Mm -hmm. I want this as an opportunity to invite everyone in Accra, Ghana, to worship with us this Sunday at the Prayer Nation, also known as Complete in Christ Church. We are located at Beside Assets Bank, UPSA branch. 
Madi of um, Madina New Road, Madina East Legon Addis. I said this time is 9 a.m. on Sunday. Uh, this Sunday is going to be another great time in God's presence. We learn more about Jesus and it's explosive. And I trust God that your presence in this Sunday service is going to make a difference in your life. Amen to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Don't just come alone, invite a friend. And I trust God that your life will never remain the same again. Thank you for your time. Thank you for praying together with us. And I believe that tomorrow we are going to have a great time in God's presence again. God bless you and grace to you. Thank you.